Hello. Happy Sunday, everyone. How are we doing? I think that sounds good. Welcome in to the last stream of the weekend. It's good to see everyone. And I hope we're all doing okay. Hi, Bonk. Thank you so much for the 47 month resub. One more month and it's four years already. Like how? We always say this, where does the time go? I honestly don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's gonna be pretty surreal for me in January. Maybe my six year anniversary of streaming on Twitch. What? What? Something that I honestly was like so wary of starting, didn't even expect anything to come of it. So there's that. Kimmer is good to see you too. Mish, how are you doing on this Sunday? Hi, yet it is. You spent the entire day hanging up curtains. It's not as easy as you would think. This is true. Yeah, those adulting things that they don't teach us in school, right? You just have to learn on your own. Hanging up curtain rods. Something that we all gotta learn sometime in our life. I mean, I guess you could hire someone to do it if you wanted, but that always feels funny, doesn't it? It's like, you know you're capable. Are you happy at least with how it turned out though? Titan, how is your day going? I'm not rich either, so that's why we just watch a YouTube video and learn to do it yourself, right? That's what I would do. It's so expensive, I can believe it. Yeah, I'm always available for hire. I wish I could go help Annie, honestly, with all his drywall work that he's doing. Yes, this is the world that we need to live in. To be able to pay with feta cheese or other snacks. That's the greatest. Okay, what do I got, guys? I had a good morning so far. I sold a, fun a couple Funko Pops. Do you guys know what those are if I say it? Samo asked me to sell some of his. It was a Venom one and a Carnage one. So I sold that to a guy that was super happy. And like these Rubbermaid cereal storing containers because we don't eat cereal at all anymore. Like the amount of wheat products in our pantry now since my allergy is like so minimal. We don't even own pasta. Like a regular pasta doesn't exist. But yeah, I had a good morning. I went for my walk nice and early, like 9, 9 a.m. And the sun actually came out for me ever since I got back home from my walk. It's been so cloudy, so I giggled at that. What? You get paid in dog pets as well? Did I sell enough to buy the property? <laughs> little by little. Is it honestly still for sale? Imagine eventually it actually happens. That would be so hilarious. Hilarious. And yeah, we can't take too long on stream today. Sundays we usually do quick and easy Sunday anyways. But I do have a family function to go to. My brother's picking me up at 4 p.m. I'm excited. I always feel spoiled. I love being a passenger princess. And like, I just love hanging out with my bro, you know? We don't do that enough. We don't see our family and friends enough. So yeah, that's my day. Let us create some delicious brunch food together. I've never eaten this before for brunch, but I've wanted to like make a number one risotto because I have arborio rice in the pantry as well as use the wild mushrooms that we foraged and they're dried. I don't want them to go bad. So yeah, we're gonna use all that up today. I bought some really yummy asparagus that will probably put like both into the risotto and in the salad. We're gonna make one of my favorite ever like brunch vinaigrettes, let's say. A bacon vinaigrette. It actually makes you wanna eat salad and it's good with other veggies too. So I was thinking of like maybe just roasting the asparagus and putting the vinaigrette on that. We'll see how we're feeling later, but it's also good with like spinach, tomato, cucumber with the bacon vinaigrette. Was thinking of doing that because those things will probably go bad quicker. If I get shotgun on the navigator, this is true. I'm very aware of my passenger duties and I've gotten very good at them. Sam used to give me shit all the time. I'd always get like sad, but I've gotten really good at being a passenger. 
You love the Funko Pops yet it is? Seriously, like how do you not buy every one? I think our collection got up to 12. And then it's like, okay, are we actually gonna like keep these forever? Like they hold their value pretty good if you keep the box, which I was so surprised. So yeah, we're getting rid of a couple of those. And it's like so cute when you like sell things on Marketplace and how happy the other person is to receive the item. Just adorable. Us adults in our toys, hey? Something about staying young. Katniss, how are you doing today? Welcome back. And thanks, Kat, for posting all your adorable pet photos in Discord. I tried to get a photo of the St. Bernard dog that I see every morning on my walk, but he literally didn't even bug me today. He was barking at another dog and then he just like moseyed on over to his porch and he just like didn't, he wasn't paying attention to me. He was like so tired, he was out of breath. He's like, I can't deal with another person. <laughs> but it was cute. Titan, you want to buy the property, but you don't want to put yourself in that kind of debt. It sucks to be like landlocked, right? That's what I'm so terrified of doing to myself. I should bring them snacks. Um, I mean, I hate like feeding animals because a lot of animals these days have allergies, so you just don't know. But maybe I will. Aww. Then he'd really love me. But then he'd never leave me alone. What if he knocks the fence over? He's so large. Okay, menu, creamy, wild mushroom risotto. We're gonna use some cheese in there, obviously. Topped with a poached egg. So we're gonna make a wild mushroom cream today, which I will show you how to do this because I don't have any fresh mushrooms to use. And I don't know if we're going to blitz up all of the mushrooms that we soften up. We can maybe leave a couple chunky. I have a couple varieties. And then, yeah, we're gonna top this with a poached egg, probably some really nice like chopped parsley on top of there to garnish. And then our side salad with our bacon vinaigrette. And then let's also not forget really quick, and it's looking so good as well. I almost dug into it last night because it was firmed up. So this is not, this is our dessert from yesterday's stream. There's no more jiggle left in it. Oh, there's a little jiggle actually, I can see now. So we're gonna pop this in the freezer. This is our pineapple delight dessert. We're gonna pop this in the freezer to firm up while we create everything else. What up, Weasel? Good to see you. You cooked up two soups from your organic Italian soup advent calendar? I love advent calendars like that. Sweet. Hi, Moldfish. It has been a long time. I mean, I was gone for almost eight weeks straight, so I can't really blame you on that part. It was partly me, but yeah, I'm back now for a little bit. For sure, like another three weeks from today, because that's how long Sam will be home. And then we'll see if I get hired onto the mine or if I'm just gonna chill at home for another three weeks after that. Yum, Earl Grey. I had two shots of espresso this morning. I'm wired. Okay, those are two recipes as well. I linked the risotto, cause that's like the main part as well as the bacon vinaigrette. So let's just make a little listeroo and away we go. What's everyone else getting up to today? Katniss was cooking, Bonk is going to a seafood boil, a feast. Sundays are like, I don't know about how you guys were raised, but my mom always made a nice meal for us on Sundays. And that was the one day where we weren't allowed to like miss dinner. We weren't allowed to like be at a friend's house or something like that. But we were allowed to bring friends over for the Sunday dinner if we wanted to hang out. But Sunday dinner was like always a family day. And even like after we went, like grew up out of the house, my brother would still come over. So yeah, Sundays, you should always cook something awesome for yourself, even if it's just breakfast, a simple meal like that. It makes you feel good. 
Yeah, a food advent calendar. Aren't those cool? What are some other ones? I think I've seen like a cheese advent calendar. There's a really nice jam one from like these fancy jams called Bon Mama. I don't know if you've ever seen that brand. It's very popular. Got like the really beautiful jars with the nice colored tops. What else? There's like beer advent calendars, wine ones, so many different ones. Sunday is a family or chill day. Eat a nice meal to buffer against the coming work week. Yes, yeah, you like kind of prepare your body, right? Eat like crap during the week. Save the good meals for Sunday. I love that, that we all do that. Hi, Greek. How is your weekend, Greek? Just finished hanging up your laundry. Yeah, laundry day is for me tomorrow. And decorations. Yes, yeah, we're going to decorate next week, I think, when Samo's home. You got the jam one too? Guys. Okay, now I got to show you mine that I dug out. It's not food related though, but Sam always gets this for me every year. They're actually adorable because they like make them different every year. So this is my advent calendar. This is the Harry Potter. Don't judge me on that. I don't want to talk about JK Rowling, but yeah, they make like a different theme. I remember this from the movie and it's actually one of my favorite scenes when they go into like the pub. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. That's how the back is. You just like kind of make one figurine a day. And then all of them look really good set up together. So I'll probably get the previous years when I go to the storage locker on Tuesday. Going out of town. 11 11 make a wish. Greek, you're still sick? Okay, I'm making this prep list for us. What do we want to do first? I'm going to say we should tea the mushrooms first, and you'll see what I mean by this. So, like, think about how you make tea is you steep your tea bag in hot water. So, think about our dried mushrooms are going to be steeped in that hot water to soften them. Cookie, happy Sunday, welcome in. I hope you're doing good. So let's make our mushroom tea. And then from that as well, is we're gonna save that like broth. Is making that mushroom tea, you can use that to cook your risotto later because it's already been flavored. So that's a super cool part that I like to do when I make mushroom risotto. And I will say, as far as using wild mushrooms, they are a lot less expensive if you buy them dry. I know I've seen at Costco, they have some dried mushrooms every now and then, whether they're like in their whole form or in a powder is also popular. So check that out. Cause I know like wild mushrooms, if you don't forage them yourself are so, so expensive to buy and use but they're very different compared to the cultivated mushrooms that we find in the grocery store, like our white button mushrooms that don't really taste like anything. I don't mind a cremini or a portobello. They have a bit more flavor. But yeah, wild mushrooms. If you've never had them before, definitely try them out. We'll see how many varieties I have. I think I have like four that we can use if we want just use a mix okay so our mushroom tea from there i think i'll make the bacon vinaigrette next and just get it done and then the nice thing of like when you make the bacon vinaigrette you have to cook bacon first so you can always use that bacon in your salad as a garnish or you can use it another time for something else during the week yeah, shrooms. Okay, so bacon vinaigrette next. And then from there, we'll continue preparing the risotto ingredients. So I always know that we need either onion or shallot with garlic. And you could also, yes, use the bacon fat in the risotto. But we're going to use the bacon fat in the vinaigrette. That is like the fat of it. So like you kind of make a warm vinaigrette and then it's like sweet and salty and smoky 
and I've made it a lot of different ways, different like vinegars, balsamic, apple cider vinegar, kind of whatever you want. Goes good with a lot of things. Yeah, always save your bacon fat. Pro tip, always have a jar of bacon fat in the fridge. Okay, so onion, garlic. We have lots of fresh herbs for today. I'm so excited. We have thyme and rosemary. So we'll get those chopped up. We'll definitely use a bit of lemon today for the risotto. That's an important one just to have it ready to squeeze the juice. That's all we need. And then after that, we'll make our mushroom cream once those other things are good to go. Cause then we can actually start cooking the risotto as you always want all of your items that are gonna go into the risotto prepared ahead of time. Kind of like if you cook a stew or a soup, you don't wanna be stressing, cutting and chopping while you're also cooking at the same time. Especially something like risotto, you kind of have to keep your eye on. I know a lot of people say like, you can't leave the stove top. You have to keep stirring the pot of risotto. That's not true. You'll see when we make it coming up that, yeah, you don't have to literally just stand there and stir it. You can do some other things, just nothing too crazy. Made a balsamic vinaigrette in the tiny honey jar your cousin gave as wedding favors. Yes. Yeah, balsamic and honey is good. That's what we're gonna use in ours today is probably honey and I'll see if I have a balsamic vinegar. I can't recall. If not though, I'll probably do a red wine vinegar because I like that flavor. Okay, so just keep on going through. So while we have our risotto in the pot on the stove top, nice low heat, we can finish prepping our salad. So the spinach is already good to go. We just take it out of the bag and then I'm gonna do cucumber and tomato, that's it. Leave it nice and chunky. And then lastly is the poaching pot for our egg. So we're gonna turn this into a brunch dish, which won't take long at all. So you just have to put a little bit of white vinegar in that pot and have it on a medium heat. Okay, fun. <laughs> I've used the word bag so many times on stream. Who in chat right now has either eaten risotto before or even made it for yourself or someone else? Have you ever? Just going to go grab some things. Nice bonk. What kind of risotto was it? Cause there's so many variations out there. We got our rice. We got this container with all the dried mushrooms. It was actually wild mushroom. That's funny. Katniss, what kind did you have? I've also made a version of this with not rice, with like different sprouted grains. I've talked about this in another stream before. So it wasn't like a proper risotto, but we still made it the same way. It was so good. Asparagus and Parmesan. So yeah, I was talking about maybe putting a couple asparagus pieces in our risotto today. We're both like sweetness, texture and color. And then another good risotto to make, especially in the springtime is like a lemon and green pea risotto is really good and refreshing when like the peas are popping out of the garden. You had a frozen one. So you can't remember what brand it was, but do you remember if it was good or not? So here's this. I am using an Arborio rice, if I can get the glare off of that. From Italy. This is a pretty popular brand in Canada. It's not super expensive. Oh, and look, on the back of this, I'm just looking under the tag, risotto con asparagus, and what's the other word? It's in Italian. Just gotta cut this, that's so funny. Asparagus e zafrano, zafrano? That would be saffron, asparagus saffron risotto. 
they have the directions on the back. That sounds fancy. Who was asking about saffron the other week? So yeah, you could follow the directions on the back of the package too when you buy risotto rice. I'm just gonna put that over by the stove for now because we don't need it quite yet. Lemon's your favorite. It's so good. Yeah, we'll put lemon in ours today too. It's just, you need that to go with the cheese and the richness. Okay, come on over. I've been doing like some going through my pantry and like downsizing, reorganizing stuff. This is my little container I had. I just stuck these corn husks in there because I didn't know really where else to put them. But maybe I'll use a different container after today. So these are all of my dried mushrooms. We'll go through them. <laughs> That's not pasta anymore. This one looks like chanterelles, like sliced chanterelles. Mm. Or, yeah, I'm gonna say it was chanterelles. Just with like how it looks stringy. So we got chanterelles. I know that this one is 100% a lobster mushroom. You could tell by the color of it. This, that's the rest of this bag too. Is it's called a lobster mushroom because of the coloring. So when it's dried, it goes more like orange. But when you forage these fresh, they're really nice and like bright, bright lobster red on the outside. And these I would say are like probably the funkiest tasting ones. And as far as texture goes, my least favorite. I don't like any mushrooms that are like super spongy and like too crunchy, let's say. And these have quite a spongy and crunchy texture on their own. That's why I really like to just like make a cream or a powder. Because when you mix them all together, they're really nice. But some of them are quite strong. And then the last little bit, these are oyster mushrooms. Do we have chicken of the woods up here? We do. Those ones are a bit more difficult to find. Not as prominent. But they do exist and they are delicious. There's our oysters. You can see like how big they actually grow because this one was dried. And that's just how it looks. And I just dehydrated these. So like I haven't picked mushrooms since we left the island. So that's like over two years ago. And these will last a long time if you take care of them. We're gonna use all of these oysters up today just to get rid of them. I'll leave this pack of the lobsters out. We can put this one away. And we'll also use a little bit of the chanterelles. As far as like leaving a mushroom more like chunky for texture in there, I would use the chanterelles. Those will be like the most forgiving and they also have like the nicest, like lightest mushroom flavor too. Samo and hi Suki, missed you, hope you've been good. So now, Let's just get out a small pot. And we'll fill it with water. You could also just like use a kettle. Up to you. We'll bring it to a boil though. And then we'll pour it over the mushrooms and make a tea. Just put it on high heat and put the lid on. It'll go faster. And then let's put this in like a heat proof container. So that we can pour it over it. Like this should do. Remember when you went mushroom hunting with your aunt? Came home so excited, told you to grab knives and a whisker basket and a dish cloth, get in the car. What? She found a huge chicken of the woods, had to go back for it. So then you ate it. What did you think of it? Okay, so these are the oysters. You can see how like some of this is like kind of powdery already. 
That'll be really easy to use. If you did just want to make a mushroom powder, you could take this and either just like throw it in a blender or a food processor. Would work as well. These are vacuum sealed bags, but we don't have the machine anymore. So I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not. I'll decide later. We'll decide that after stream. You ate some of the mushroom and then she froze the rest. It was big. Yeah, they get really big, right? Okay, so that's that. Some chanterelles. Because, like, you have to think these are dried, right? So they're going to expand. You like that. Yeah, Sam's mom loves mushroom foraging. We showed her them when we were on the island and when we went foraging, and she never did it before. They live in Ontario, so, like, eastern Canada. And then she started just, like, keeping her eye open on, like, walks and stuff like that. This one looks weird, so I'm just going to take it out. And then eventually she found mushroom spots, so she, like, forages all the time. It's pretty awesome. The Anova does it, too. I'll save the bags. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Samo. Okay, so that's our stuff ready for the tea. A trio. That looks good. I mean, we definitely have to have mushroom lovers in the chat today. I know there's a lot of mushroom haters out there, too. Okay, so that's going. So we're just gonna wait for the water. I suppose in the meantime, I was gonna like cook the bacon on the stovetop, but you know how easy it is to just cook bacon in the oven and like so much cleaner. So I think we're just gonna tray up the bacon and cook it in the oven, get it nice and crispy. Then we can cut it up and then we can reuse all the fat to make the vinaigrette. So we'll prepare some of the items that we need in the blender. That's where we're going to make the vinaigrette. So even just a little blender works too. The trio would be expensive at the store. Yes. Yes. I mean, those aren't the most expensive mushrooms to buy. Like what? I have often seen like dried porcini. Those are expensive to buy dried. But you only need like a small bit, right? Bacon in the oven is the best. It seriously is. So let's just put this mushroom container over. I'm not going to cook a ton of bacon. Maybe like four strips. That's really nice and thick stuff. Really? So the fresh trios of mushrooms there are usually cheaper than the dried. It also depends on the amount of the dried, right? Because the price skyrockets when you dry this stuff because they price it by weight. So you have to think like this amount of dried mushrooms is going to equal this much fresh mushrooms. So maybe it honestly costs the same, right? We'd have to really take a look at it. Get some parchment. Oh, and I'm going to do a foil sheet pan first. This is something that we do at work to help the dishwasher so they don't have to scrub as much pans. Is we foil line our sheet pans and then do a parchment. And like people always argue like, oh, that's such like a waste of aluminum foil. And it's like, okay, but you're going to waste more water taking the time to try and scrub the pan rather than doing this. So you decide what you want to waste. Oh no, it didn't tear nice. 
I hate when that happens. It's like two ounces of the dried mushrooms for eight bucks, but a quart is like four bucks. Yeah. It also, yeah, depends on the season too. Now is like definitely a time where they will be in season. Usually anywhere from like end of August, they'll start popping the different varieties up until the first frost. So they're probably done now. I don't know how the, how the island weather has been. You do the pan lining too, Bailey. That's what I feel. Like there's probably more aluminum in the world than fresh water. <laughs> That's honestly how I think when I cook now. Everyone at work thinks I'm crazy, it's fine. Look at how thick these pieces of bacon are. It's the best. Some of the best bacon I've ever bought, honestly. Okay, let's lay these out and then I'll wash my hands. It's so thick. It's not even sliced fully. It's definitely like a quarter inch though. And yeah, the people that just throw the bacon grease down the drain. Please don't. I mean, we've seen so-called chefs do it at work too. Is they'll, they'll brown off ground beef in a pot for whatever reason, rather than just like throwing it on a sheet pan in the oven. Cause like beef doesn't brown in a pot, it just goes gray. But anyways, onto the next thing that they shouldn't do is they literally just stuck a strainer right in the sink and poured all the grease down the sink was like, you're calling yourself a chef. I was like, that grease trap's gonna overflow in like two days now. And yeah, we tray so much bacon for breakfast at work. It was like 20 to 25 trays. Of course your plumber hates you if you do that. Has like anyone seen the photos of like the pipes of the water in the city? Blah, blah, blah. That grease will just harden with the cold water. And that's how you clog the drain, silly butts. Hi, John, good to see you. So yeah, do this, do this. It honestly helps. Okay, so this won't take very long. I'll turn the oven to 425. And then it's usually like a 15, 15 or so minute cook time. We'll check it halfway. Like I said, in the meantime, we can get together some of the ingredients for the dressing because we're just gonna pour like a little bit of the bacon into there. We blend up the bacon in the dressing so there's like some texture and then the grease and our sweetness, our vinegar, some aromatics. You didn't know about it. I know these are the things that they don't really teach us in school and it's like actually so important. But yeah, you will, you'll really appreciate like keeping the pipes clean and stuff if you ever experience a grease trap that overflows. I hope no one has to experience that, but most people that I know that work in a kitchen have all experienced it at one point or another in our life. Your Italian soups were only meh, too strong on the rosemary. But yeah, you got 10 more days of soups to try. Maybe you can like, kind of make it into something different. Add a can of tomatoes, maybe water it down, pop some chicken in there and make it better. Yes, exactly bonk. So we can say that for any fat as well, right? Any fat, that is hard at room temperature. Well, that's exactly what's gonna happen if you pour it down the drain. And that also doesn't mean just because the fat is liquid, like a grapeseed oil or canola oil, it still doesn't mean pour it down the drain. So that's why there's always like a dirty oil bin behind restaurants because you have to keep it separate. 
Like, grease doesn't really decompose or break down quick enough the way that, like, organic ingredients do. So that's why it's not recommended if you have a compost at home to put a lot of, like, fatty stuff in your pile or, like, food that's gone bad. Oh, and look at this. So I was actually trying to get this sponsorship for us. I'm going to put it in chat. Speaking of compost, it's not in Canada yet, in, unfortunately, but it's called the Mill Bin. And I found this from someone I follow on Instagram. She lives in Austin and has like a ranch with her husband. They use this Mill Bin and it like creates compost from your food waste that is then dried. And you can send it to a nearby chicken farm and they'll like come and pick up your scraps and you can like help the farms out. It was such a cool thing. So like I emailed the company, but they don't have them available in Canada yet. But check it out if you're someone that like doesn't have compost or good waste uh, services where you live because that was so cool. You pay a little bit for like a monthly subscription, which you can also always cancel at any time. But check it out if you're in the States. I wish I could try it. I just typed it. I just typed the name. It's called Milbin. If you look at what I typed, you can Google that. Okay, come on over. Our water is boiling. So we're going to make a mushroom tea. So yeah, she has like... I said a ranch, so she gives all of her waste to like the chickens and the pigs on the ranch. It's so cool. So does that mean I have to make something like that here in Canada? Sorry, I also teed you. And let's not go crazy with the liquid. That should be enough. Like I said, we're going to reuse this liquid afterwards. Okay, I'm putting the bacon in the oven. I'm going to set a 10 minute timer. Feels good? Steam ya. Yeah. Okay, so that's how it looks. I'm just going to give it a stir. You can't stick your finger in there. Don't burn yourself. You use a coffee can for grease. Yes. That is something that is like so handy. Coffee can. Anything that can like hold the heat, right? Or you could always just let it cool first and then scoop it out after is easy too. So these are, they're like already softened if I show you. It's like already pliable. So you can leave that in there as long or as little as you want. But I'm going to leave it in there till it cools off. Because the longer we leave the mushroom in the liquid, the more like flavor we're going to get infused into there too. So now we can just put that over to this side until it's time to make the mushroom cream. Turn this fan down a bit. What's next on our list? Yes, a mason jar. That one works good too. Mushroom tea, complete. Bacon vin is in the works. I'm gonna go grab the blender top. And we'll get some herbs and stuff in here. That's interesting, Katniss. How they do that. Has anyone ever had this bacon vinaigrette before? I've made it a couple times on stream now. Oh yes, I also have tarragon. Mm. That's going to go into the mushroom cream. That's the whole reason I bought it. Just grabbing some garlic. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> you guys have had them sweet. Okay, I brought out the onion for the risotto. This tarragon's gonna be for the risotto too. But we'll work on it in a bit. And then just some thyme and rosemary. It's so good, hey? Warm spinach salad with a bacon vinaigrette. I didn't think this was as popular. But now this makes me happy. And I will say like mushrooms with spinach salad is good too. Mushroom and bacon is good together. So if you didn't want to make the risotto, you could always just throw some mushrooms into the salad. We're not going insane on the rosemary today, but look, we have all these herbs left over. So it looks like we'll see how much time we have at the end of stream. I have to be done by 3 p.m. But if we have time, I'll get the dehydrator out with you guys and we'll get all the herbs drying. Mm, maybe I should just do extra ones for the risotto. Yeah, because each of these packs, none of them were on sale this week. Each of these packs was $2.50. So like, what? That's almost $10 in herbs. We'll do that and that for the risotto. Not much at all. I don't like when my risotto tastes too herby. That's for sure. Okay, so some of this is for the dressing and some is for the risotto. Let's just get a small container. We'll do the risotto ones first, I guess. Do I want to chop this? Probably. Always good to chop your rosemary. Even if it seems like really fresh. Just pick it off the stem. And these are all herbs that go good with mushrooms. Is what I chose today. A lot of herbs that go good with meat, we can say, go good with mushrooms. It's like mushrooms are kind of meaty in their own way. Suppose that's maybe why they are used quite frequently in vegetarian cuisine. The other thing about dehydrating herbs is it makes your hoe smell amazing. Like imagine if I just threw like a couple orange slices in with that. Holy. That's perfect, Katniss. And like, that's pretty cool. If you dry your own herbs, you know exactly where that dried herb came from. It's not just like a random jar from the store. So just that really small amount of rosemary for the risotto. We don't need a mass amount in everything because you go pretty heavy in the dressing. into the blender. Mm, lemon slices to soap with. Wait, you're making soap? There's this one book that I really want to buy. I think it's called, I don't know, it's like a homesteading book. How to homestead, something like that. A YouTuber girl that I follow uses it all the time. Like she makes her own shampoos and like soaps and stuff. You make it as a hobby. I feel like I remembered this. I've always wanted to get into this. I might actually bug you coming up because my friend and I, like one of my childhood friends, she lives here. She just had a, a really adorable baby. So she's like off work. We've been thinking about like creating these women workshops once a month for some of our friends and family. So we are trying to think of ideas of like what to do. And I think making soap would be so fun. If you want, you can post a link to your stuff, Katniss. 
We can support you. I love supporting small businesses during the holidays. We've had this convo before, right, Greek? The homesteading book. I need it. It's a must. These are like the shortest little time stems ever. You just like cut the top inch off of the plant. That's it. You know how hard this is to pick? Don't really sell it anymore. Just gifts for family. Okay, no problem. Thanks for like telling us about it though. Time is easy to strip. At least, yeah, there is that. If it's nice and fresh, it's not that hard to take the leaves off of the stem. For sure, Katniss. I don't know. I just have this, like, feeling that I need to interact with our local community. This is where I grew up here, so I know a lot of people, but I also left for a long time, right? I didn't keep a touch with every keep in touch with everyone. But it's like one of those relationships where it's like even if you don't talk, you have such a good relationship that like if you do randomly message that person one day, it's like picking up where you left off, right? Even if it's years down the road. I got a little time for that. Good one, Mish. Hello, Pepsi dude. Welcome in. How's it going? More tedious than time consuming? Thanks. <laughs> okay, we'll do that for the risotto. My bacon timer is going off. Let's have a peek. Nothing even happened. It's tricking us. I'm going to do another 10 minutes. So this one just goes into the blender. We don't have to chop it because we can let the blender do its job. And then this one will get ready for the risotto. Feel like you lost a lot of friends after they had kids. And like we always kind of take that as an us problem, right? The people that don't have the kids. But it's not really on us because we don't know what it's like to have to raise a human, right? It takes a lot of effort and time out of your life, especially if you want to be like a great parent and role model for your kid. So it's kind of fair. But like I'm, I'm excited to meet my friend's son. I don't know. There's just like something about him that is like different compared to other babies. I'm like usually I'm terrified of babies. I'm like the last person you want to hand a baby. Yeah, I totally understand it too. I also have some friends that like formed a blended family as well. Like they didn't have their own kid, but they kind of adopted another person's kid. So that's been cool to watch. And like, I'm pretty sure my friend is going to homeschool her son. So I'm so excited for that adventure. Shutterbug, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Yes, yeah, and you, you will like lose people in your life as you grow up. It's just something that happens, right? Is your interests change? And you also change as a person massively. Like every day you're different. And there also comes a point where you, you realize who you are and like what your values are. Instead of always trying to be that person that pleases everyone. You're too selfish to have kids. Well, we all have reasons why we don't want children, right? 
I'm like, I'm pretty sure my, all of the people I know that have had kids understand that too, right? I know this because I always see them like looking at my social media stuff, but like I don't talk to them anymore. <laughs> so it's like, I see you and I know you see what I'm doing, <laughs> but I honestly don't know what they're doing. You're playing portal with your son? What is that? Bacon baking is simple. Yes, it is. Oh, wow, Pepsi dude. Well, that's really nice of you taking care of your friend. I love that. Your 13 year old cat is enough, totally. And I'll also say this. Like, I would like to maybe be a role model for those younger folk that might not have that at home, right? Because everyone is raised so differently. Like, it was a cool feeling to have that when I was young. To, like, have someone that's an adult that's not your direct, like, family. Everyone needs that. Okay, Bonk. He's jumping in the shower. Portal is a cool game. Cool. He's AFK. He's leaving us. I know. I can't wait to have pets and like all of the animals on the farm. Okay. What do we want to do? Fresh garlic we know is really strong, right? To put it in the vinaigrette. So I think if we do that for the risotto, we'll mince it. And just this one clove of garlic for the bacon vinaigrette. That's it. I just got to go grab the garlic press. And like, don't feel like you guys are singled out if you don't have kids because like I have a really big family on both sides and literally none of us cousins that are older now have children and like only two of us are married out of like the 10 of us that are adults now so it's definitely becoming more popular You've got those people in your life? Nice. Your dad's best friend and his wife, they're like parents for you and your sister, right? And so like I had that growing up playing soccer. My one coach was like that for me. Like you never really realize how important those people were in your life until you get older. Yeah, they've been friends for a long time, Mish. That's amazing. Okay, I should do it. Hey, rinse this. So that's for the risotto. We could just put it to the side. It's ready to go. It's ready to go for the risotto. Dang. That's really sad, Mish. Well, I'm glad you still keep in contact, right? There's garlic juices everywhere. Who does this? Okay, we need our acid as well as sweetener. So let me go see what I have in the pantry. I'm definitely gonna use honey. Ooh, I do have balsamic vinegar, I'm happy. So we're gonna do a bacon balsamic vinaigrette with some honey just to balance it out. 
a whole dang bottle of this. And then balsamic vinegar. I always think of it as like more of a sweet vinegar. It's like almost syrupy if you get a good variety of it. It's nice and dark. But yeah, the sweetness in it is really nice for balancing out dressings. And I know that it goes good with tomatoes. So the way that I make dressings is I always pour the vinegar in with the aromatic so we can kind of see how much fat and stuff. Most of the time I'll make a dressing like a one-to-one -one ratio with the vinegar and the fat. So today is fat, but usually we use like an oil, right? Like olive oil or canola oil. But yeah, one to one. I like my dressings pretty like tangy on the palate rather than like fatty where they don't taste as good that way. It's like when the oil or fat coats your tongue, you don't actually taste as much of the flavors. Okay. That's what we did. We look in it there. It's not that much. Not making a massive amount of this dressing. But like a little bit of vinegar goes a long way. If we have to balance it out, we can just leave that bottle back there still. And then let's do like a teaspoon or actually a tablespoon of honey. Kind of watch as it pours in. I love honey so much. Mmm. And now we're just waiting on the bacon strips. What's on our timer? 24 seconds? Okay, it's just like starting to cook. It's just starting to cook. Maybe I'll leave this honey here too. So let us just put this over to the side for now. We'll chop up our onion. I'll reset this timer too. I'll set it at five minutes. Our onion garlic, we got the thyme and rosemary already. So the onion's gonna be for the risotto. I'm only gonna use half of this half of an onion because it is so large. Shallots are also a great option if you have that available to you. I had this to use up though, so that is what I'm doing. And we'll just wrap up that other half and I'll probably stick it in a soup or something for myself this week. And we are gonna fine dice this. So when we're in culinary school and we learn these dishes, one thing we're taught about risotto is you want to cut the onion and stuff like that the same size as the rice kernel. Well, think about how small a rice kernel is, right? So that's what you have to aim for, which might be difficult. Take your time, but get as close as you can to that. This little piece is falling off, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Maybe one more cut. There. Okay, now we'll go back across. You'd grate the onion? Hey, that's actually a really good idea, Katniss. Yes, yeah, if you don't want to take the time to practice your knife skills, just grate the onion. Because then it'll just kind of melt into the risotto as it kind of gets saucy. And so you'd rather, like, I'd rather want the onion to melt in there than have, like, the big chunks. 
This one is being a pain in the butt a bit. Just because it's getting a bit dry, they start to fall apart. You'd never cut it as a sous chef. <laughs> Not a chance. Thank you for your honesty. I actually love that suggestion so much. Okay, there's that. Just cut those couple pieces that were funny shaped. Because sometimes that happens with onions. It bugs me. I'm just going to throw this like root end out. So I always find it doesn't even cook down. Anyways. Okay, let's just get a small container. The onion was a bit strong. I'm not going to cry, though. I'm not crying. You're crying. Boom. Oh, we need the tarragon still to go in the other garlic and herb container. We need some tarragon. Has anyone ever had this herb? Mmm, now I want to make béarnaise sauce too. I'll definitely be drying this out. I love it so much. A lot of people like hate it. I'm even going to have a little piece. Mmm. I'm like, I don't even love licorice that much. But tarragon, there's just something about it. And especially with like mushrooms and chicken is really good too. Just like adds that little something that makes you think. It's like, what is that? I like it. But yeah, the best mushroom soup I've ever had in my life. This is the secret of the lady is she puts tarragon in it. And like so much too. But me oh my, I still remember it to this day like 10 years later. Okay, that was our five minutes already. Holy, there's things happening but it's not quite browned yet. So I'm going to go another five minutes. Bearnaise is life. Oh, I kind of have a hankering for a steak. I mean, I'll get all the good eats when Samo comes home on Thursday. Are we excited, Chad? I'm excited. I'm ready to see my human again. It's like the last week, you always like do good until it's like the last couple days and you're just like, I'm ready. I'm over it. It's time. Tarragon and chicken is so good together. Probably good with pork as well. Grilled some zucchini. Mmm. Yes. That would be delicious with it too. Okay, now you can pop that over there with the onion. Those are our risotto things. I usually just honestly stack it. That's why I love these deli cups. The tarragon can go back in the fridge. I'm thinking our bacon's almost done. So we can loop back to this dressing. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. I think we'll put this lemon over by the stove top too. And maybe while I'm waiting this like moment, I'm just going to take a quick bathroom break now. Hold tight. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back in like less than a minute.
It's me. Hi. <laughs> pea beak. It's the Kate pea beak. I love it. Of all the times that I get embarrassed by not being able to talk, I can also get to giggle of you guys not being able to type in chat. I was two seconds off. It was actually almost an equal minute. Nice. Deadly. I love how you timed that. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> It looks good. Almost. Maybe we'll flip it. Maybe we'll give it a flip. Because, like, this one side of it looks good. But, like, here is still a little bit under. Fine. I didn't want to flip it, but I will. I love it, Greek. Like, some people would honestly be like, what a weirdo. Why would they time me? But like, I don't know, something about like working in the kitchen, it's all about timings. Yes, the flip was a great idea. You can tell there's so much like yummy sugars in here though. Look at that, it's like burning. This stuff is just so thick. Oh, it's like a bacon caramel. Hello, hello there. Okay, hey, couple more moments, and then we'll be okay. Probably five and that's it. Bacon really is life, isn't it? I layered the bacon. It's called shingling. I shingled the bacon. Actually, while we're waiting, since this is almost complete, we need to get the blender over. Put it over here. Get it ready for the dressing. Oh, I just reset my timer. That, we'll go back to this business. We'll see how much bacon fat we get off of there. We can always top up with some extra oil, but you definitely want to use bacon fat because of the flavor and also like the texture too. And then once this is mixed, I'm probably just going to go grab a mason jar to put it into. What do I have here? Whoa. Easy does it. This one is really cute and like fancy. Look at it. I love the lid. I think there was honey in here once upon a time. So this will be our dressing jar after. Hee <laughs> hee. Wait, there's no music? Excuse me. What is my stream? I had it going. And it paused. Let's just switch it to the next song and see. Thanks for saying something. Do you hear it now? I have it on the same setting I usually do. Sometimes my iTunes does weird stuff. You hear it now? Okay, perfect. How dare. Technology's been like funny for me the last few days. I don't know why. It's like I, I'm still trying to figure out how I woke up yesterday at seven in the morning and I walked out and the computer was turned on by itself. I'm still trying to figure that one out. Cause like, I don't think technology can do that, can it? Stream Ghost is back, a Windows update. But it was completely shut down. Like after every stream, I will just shut down the computer. Okay, so if there's like an update waiting, it'll try to turn on. So that makes sense then, because I have to like, 
put the Mac to Windows side for it to actually complete the update. It was so funny. I literally pressed start streaming today and it's like, would you like to do an update right now? We're about to restart your computer. I was like, no, don't. What are you doing? Okay. The one thin side got so crispy and the other side is like not as crispy, but I'm okay with it, honestly. I'm gonna put this here. That's a very hot pan. And then I'm just gonna turn the oven off. We're good. We're good on that. It didn't update. No, I checked what time it was set. It's set for like 5.44 p.m. today. I made sure it wasn't set to restart during my stream. <laughs> right, Mish? Why does it always do that? It's like it knows. It's like, hey, I'm just going to stress out this human today. Okay, let's just put one of these bacon strips in there. That'll be more than enough. And then I'll just kind of stack these so I can hold on to them and let the fats go into the blender. Like a couple tablespoons of bacon fat. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll just go have lunch now. There's bacon grease everywhere. Okay. Greek got us at 111 or 1111. Now it's 111. Get it. Put the lid on. Let's see how this blends up. If it doesn't quite emulsify. Oh, I was gonna do this too. A little bit of Dijon mustard will help this process. I almost forgot. <laughs> you weren't expecting me to put the bacon in? I love doing that funny stuff like that to see if you guys are paying attention. Okay, so like a teaspoon of Dijon mustard will help the dressing come together. You're not really going to taste the mustard, but it's awesome for dressings and most dressings will have that in there. Okay, that looks good. Let us begin. Whoa. I bet you this is so good on potatoes, too. Is it a funny sound? We're chugging along. I just had to get the bacon blitzed up a bit first. This is on half speed. And I always leave mine a little bit chunky. That's just how I like it. But it's almost there. It's working really good. Hey, okay, ready? Hey, it really messed up the lid, as you can see. We'll definitely have to scrape all of that out. I guess I should leave that plugged in just in case we have to adjust this. I noticed that this clear Vitamix container does have a little bit of a different sound compared to the other one. I don't know what that's all about. That's how it looks on the lid. And then this is how it turned out. Mm -hmm. That's what it turns into. Just like straight emulsified goodness. 
Let's have a bite. The only thing we didn't put in was any salt and pepper. But like I always add the salt after because bacon is salty. Look at it. Hi, Trekker. Mm -hmm. It's like perfectly acidic. I love when it just like gets the little tingle in your throat. That is so good. Okay, scrape this out. We'll get it into the jar. Not much else left on this stream. It's almost risotto time. Don't want to waste any of those fresh herbs. Trekkard, are you having a good day? Don't waste the bacon. Okay. Yeah, the pineapple delight. Ah, we got to check it. Okay, that'll be next. That's next. So it doesn't go rock hard. Thank you. Don't let me uh, get carried away with my ADD that I definitely know I have. Go back to work tomorrow so you're like kind of bummed. I like to, like, when I have those feelings, I always try and, like, do something that's, like, kind of self-care. If I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed like that, just, like, come back to your own self. I don't know if you like to have, like, baths or something like that. Have a nice meal. Do some, like, coloring or something. Yeah, it's interesting to like learn of that as an adult, but I think it's honestly like so helpful for you to also know that as an adult. Because then you can learn like healthy ways to work with it, right? It's not always like has to be this debilitating thing that everyone like makes it out to be. Yeah, um... The dressing. It doesn't look good from the top at all, does it? But if I do it there, it does look like gravy, like Mish said. And then we're actually not going to put it in the fridge because the bacon grease will harden up. So we just leave that out until we're ready to use it that same day. And then to use it at a later time from the fridge, you just have to like pop it in the microwave for a second to get the bacon fat liquefied again or like leave it on the counter for a couple of seconds. Sweet. And put the honey and the balsamic away too. The other thing that I've been learning as well about like autism and ADHD is it's so prominent in females and we're really good at masking it too. So like a lot of us just don't even know we have it. Trev, who says gravy can't be dressing? Not me. <laughs> That is also true, Greek. Yeah, thank you for saying that part of it. Okay, next up, we're going to take care of our mushrooms. The mushroom tea that we were working on earlier. Ooh, nice. It's looking so good, actually. Look at the color of that. I'm glad we let it sit. I'm just going to put these two things away. Probably come back with a cutting board to use. Actually, there's one in the dishwasher clean here. Oh, 
See, I told you. I told you I was gonna have ADHD. This is the dessert. Stuck soid. <laughs> I just, I think, proved that for my own self. <laughs> Thanks. This is the dessert. We made it yesterday on stream, but then it had to like chill and firm up. You just got here? No, it was seriously perfect. I was actually supposed to do this next. So this is called Pineapple Delight. Oh shit, I didn't mean to do that. I clicked the wrong button on my mouse. Yeah, it's called Pineapple Delight. Give me a sec. I'll just go into my Discord and find the recipe from yesterday. It's one of my favorite desserts. And it's so, so easy too. So check that out. And then we're going to try and get it out of here. It was like a little bit not firm enough just putting it in the fridge overnight. So I just popped it into the freezer for an hour and 20 minutes so far. Fresh and warm. Nice bonk. And yes, the liquid you soak the mushrooms in is a flavor bomb. Okay. And then... Just for garnish, Bach. Bach. Wait, I said Mish, but I meant Trev. Sometimes I just read the color of the name and get it messed up. So yesterday we toasted some coconut. It's unsweetened as well, but doesn't make the dessert too sweet. But let's try and get a piece out of here. I don't know what's gonna happen. Also, I made the the crust gluten free. I think first, maybe I'm just gonna use a butter knife to kind of go around the outside. Shouldn't be too difficult to cut. Nice. And so it's, this layer is like fresh pineapple that we blitzed up in the food processor and then it has like, think of almost like a no-bake cheesecake sort of scenario. What should I do? Three? Three by three? I like how this side is like nice and firmed. I can tell this center though. Look guys, this center is like so soft still. I can't even cut it. So it's going to go back in the freezer. But that is how it's looking. Mmm. It's still not ready. Somebody send help. Your center is kind of soft as well. That was our dessert from yesterday, Trekker. Okay, back to the mushrooms. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, everyone. <laughs> so we're gonna make most of these wild mushrooms into a cream. I'll show you how to do that. But some of them, like the larger ones, we're going to leave chunky. So we have three varieties of wild mushrooms in here that were dried. And they're foraged by myself and my friend. I didn't put it in the freezer, Greek, until this morning. Like until we started the stream. But yeah, we have oyster mushroom, chanterelle, and lobster mushroom. So this is the oyster mushroom. This is like the biggest one. So we're going to cut that up rather than blitzing it because it looks so good. A couple of those. And as well, I like the texture the most on these. Same with chanterelles. The lobster mushrooms, we're just going to blend up. So I really don't care about those as much. And like you won't really know your favorite mushrooms until you try a bunch. Let's go like that, because I don't want it too chewy and weird. And then next up, we're just going to strain that liquid out of there. Oh, my mess strainer is over here too. I had so many dishes from yesterday's stream, I had to do two full loads. 
one last night and one this morning. I was like, what is going on right now? Okay, so we're just gonna do this, just from the pot that we used for the water earlier. Look at that like mushy bits. Get all of the goodness. Just gonna rinse that container with water because we might reuse it again. Stuff portobellos with stovetop stuffing spinach? What? Haven't even finished all the pumpkin pie you made. Gonna have it for days, but that's like my favorite thing to have for days. Okay, look at this color now. So this is what we're gonna use as broth for our risotto. I always call that liquid gold. They don't like mushrooms. <laughs> Disown them, Bonk says. <laughs> Okay, move this over. The chanterelles are like really, really woody. I'm not gonna use those. I thought they would soften up more, I don't know. But yeah, these oysters, just cut nice small pieces of mushroom. It doesn't have to be like anything fancy. Cause once you mix it into the risotto, you won't really notice it. Just nice to have a bite of like actual mushroom every now and then though. Oh yeah, the picking the mushrooms off the pizza. That's always funny to watch. You're gonna buy some mushroom kits? That's cool. I've always wanted to do that. Shiitake and oyster. Shiitake is like so good for flavoring. It's so strong. Okay, there's our little chunkers. Doesn't look like much. Put that over by the stove. Okay, our mushroom cream. You can do this a couple ways. I think we'll put, I don't think we'll put very much effort into the cream. We'll put more of the aromatics into the risotto itself. So now I'm gonna get <laughs> the blender back out again with obviously a different topper. And we're gonna blend those mushrooms up with some whipping cream until it's really nice and smooth. We can add some salt and then pepper to it if we want. And I'll probably put like a little bit of the tarragon in there too. And then that cream just gets mixed into the risotto at the end as we're finishing it. This also makes the risotto not as traditional. So anytime someone adds cream into a risotto, it shouldn't actually be there. But personally, I know that I know how to make a risotto properly. So doing this part of it isn't gonna wreck it. It's gonna make it better and it just kind of goes with the type of risotto that we're making. Cream of mushroom soup was in so many dishes. It's true, Trev. And I really liked actually those kind of casseroles. Like what, we had a chicken broccoli one with rice and mushroom soup. What's another one that's really good? A tater tot casserole, I remember. Someone from my family bringing to a potluck. That was good with mushroom soup. That sounds good, Katniss. Are you making that? Yeah, good one, Bonk. If someone doesn't like mushrooms, for stews, just slice them really thin, throw them in when you're like sauteing the garlic and onion and it'll just like melt right into the sauce. Your wife is actually cooking a chicken casserole this eve. That's really nice. It is casserole season. But 
But if you did want to make like a fancy mushroom cream to also use in like other places, you could take all of these aromatics that we prepared for the risotto and like saute this together, add it into the mushrooms that we teed with the cream and then you'd have like a flavorful mushroom cream, but I'm just trying to get it blended and creamy. It's gonna be really thick is how I like to make it. The perks of being raised by a former professional chef. Imagine. Okay. Go, go, go. Hopefully this blender is not too massive. I suppose we will see, won't we? We're right in there. whoa -ly. So that's about like a cup of mushrooms after we softened it. Okay, that's around a cup worth. I need to bring this strainer to my bro. It broke the other day. I think if this happened like in the dishwasher, but the weld came off. The weld came off of my strainer handle. I was like, no, this is my favorite. Cream, creamy. Pour enough in. Almost like equal amounts. And then we'll just start this on low speed. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm not used to making this such small amount. I know you guys can't really see this. So we'll just do this instead. Things are happening. And you could also leave this cream like chunky. My local garage, yes. <laughs> I think I need more cream. We almost made butter. It smells good though. I honestly think that looks good, guys. All just blitzed up. I'm just gonna check underneath with a little spatula. It literally did like a whipped mushroom cream. They must have like snuck a higher fat content into this whipping cream I bought. Cause usually it doesn't do this that quick. But yeah, that looks good. Mmm. Cause that'll kind of melt into there. Basic Lee Bonk. Not even like I had the blender on high speed. It's halfway to butter even just coming out of the carton. Hello? I guess that means it's good quality, so I can't really complain, can I? Okay, mushroom cream complete. Over to the stove. Put things away. What do you got today? Wait, it's actually minus eight Celsius where you're at? I think the cows are happy. Yeah, this, this brand, Lactantia, is always good. It's not? That is wrong then. It's 21, <laughs> okay. I was like, what? There's no way, now I need to see us. I was gonna say, that's colder than here, that's impossible. I'm at plus three, Misha's at minus three. Ooh, we do need this out for the risotto. 
the white wine just presented itself to me. I was like, hello. 21 Celsius? When is the last time I've even experienced that temperature? August, maybe? <laughs> you got a nice day, Greek. It's misting though, so you're not gonna see the sun at all. Okay, that's all of our stuff ready for the risotto. So last thing's on my list while, I think we can do it while the risotto is cooking because we need about like 15, 20 minutes to cook the rice out is we need to prep our spinach, just take it out of the bag for the salad, cut up a couple tomatoes and some cucumber, and then just a poaching egg pot which I was just going to, let's just do this, reuse this. This has mushroom broth in it for the risotto. So I'll just fill this up because we're just going to poach one egg. Just give it a rinse so it's not like a mushroom scented egg. And then I'll stick a little bit of white vinegar in and that'll be good to go. We're going to top our risotto with a poached egg. Do not need this frying pan today. I need a medium pot. Rainy and dreary there. Hi Maka, how are you? Welcome. Thank you very much for the 100 bits, too. Okay, this is my medium-sized pot. Straight from the dishwasher. Thank you for your services. And now we'll come over to this stove. It's time. We'll say the day got like, it's randomly like cloudy and gray and then the sun peeks out. You got your first snow. I did wake up to like a little skiffing of snow on the ground today. I was like, oh, it's coming. I know, gross, right? Hell? <laughs> Bunk. There's a, there's a place called that. Who lives there? <laughs> I do know about the cold humid. I hate it. Hell hath fro fr frozen over. Hell hath frozen over. <laughs> Holy, wait, you moved to Illinois? Are you liking it though? Okay, we need some butter first thing. And then, oh, I didn't even measure out our risotto rice. Wait, we need to, this is the first time I'm gonna look at the recipe, oops. Wait a tick. And she makes a lot of this, I think. I don't need to make six servings, so we're gonna say we're making half of this amount. So three quarters of a cup. That's so funny, like every stream so far, I go to measure out like the grain or whatever we're cooking and they've all been three quarters of a cup for the amount I'm making. But here it is. Superfino Arborio Rice. This is not a fancy one either. Pretty inexpensive brand. California had its nice parts, but some not so good too. It's really expensive, yes. Still going out and walking and trying new foods. That makes me so happy. I am glad. And yeah, lots of new restaurants. That's always so fun. I loved doing that when I was like solo going around too. Okay, so three quarters of a cup. Even it out, maybe a, a little bit more. That's good. Okay, now our butter. You have a whole list of restaurants to try still. Sam and I, we used to try and go to like one 
one meal out a week. Like when we were first kind of together, we'd have like date days, right? No, I don't go out to restaurants to eat that often anymore. Unless it's like honestly a family function or something like that. Especially since groceries are so much, like we keep talking about this. I'm like, honestly, if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. There's nothing else to it, right? Okay, so that's my nub in a butter. Let's go medium heat. See if I can get you guys a bit closer. I'll just move some of this stuff around. And then we'll need the onion as well as the garlic and the herbs. And same with the white wine. I'm gonna go up a touch and then into the pot more. That's better, I think. Yes. Okay, so that's heating up. We're gonna start with our onions first. I'm just gonna go grab a spoon, unless I have one here, possibly. No, I'm gonna go grab a spoon so we can stir it. And one thing about your onions for your risotto is we actually don't want to brown them. That's something that we're taught. Is you just wanna cook them until they're translucent, but everything for risotto, you don't brown it because you want everything to stay like nice and white. Very similar color to the rice. It's funny how there's like certain little rules like that. Yeah, you can make three meals at home for the price of one restaurant meal right now. Nice, Cajun seafood place. I wonder what I'm gonna have for dinner tonight. I'll try and remember to take a photo. Sometimes you get carried away though. I'm putting this in now that there's some butter melted. Our onions, and then let's turn on the poaching pot just to have it going. Get the lid on. Biscuits and gravy. I did have me some shrimp and grits yesterday. They were delicious. Okay, so they said for one and a half cups of rice, they used seven cups of chicken broth. That's a lot. We are gonna sprinkle a bit of salt onto these onions as they're cooking to help them go translucent. Take some of the extra moisture out. I haven't had biscuits and gravy in yeah, hot minute. Stir it up. So we might have to mix a little bit extra liquid than what we have for the mushroom broth, but we can do that once that is used up first. Spread all this out. I'm just gonna work on scraping my mushroom cream in the blender while that stuff is cooking because I don't really have to watch it right now. Yes, yeah, adding salt to your onions or like mirepoix too will help them cook out faster. Most people don't know that. The salt will extract more of the moisture. Nom. Okay, while I'm waiting, I'm just gonna pack a couple things up. Like those bacon strips. You're not a huge seafood fan, but your husband loves shrimp. If you like had to eat a seafood, what would you choose, Katniss? <laughs> Wanna make someone sweat? Just be salty. I mean, you're not wrong. Not far off. 
Ugh. Okay, like I know I'm cooking, but our one neighbor, like next door neighbor in this building, I swear all they do is like use mothballs. The scent is so strong coming from their unit. It goes under like our front door and it's literally down the whole hallway. So that's all I smell when I go to like the front of the place. It's gotta be mothballs, otherwise like it seriously smells like someone died. Did they die? <laughs> I don't even know what to say and like I've never seen them. They never leave. Did they die? I don't know. I'm scared. Cooking meth? I honestly have no idea. Maybe I should knock on the door one day and just be like, hello, I am your neighbor. Cause I'm like so curious. But yeah, we like left for work one rotation and like came back and this person had moved in. And honestly, ever since then, like the past like for months now, it just reeks. Definitely time to move. Don't even knock, just move. Okay, bonk, bye. Have so much fun at your seafood boil today and please like have something for me. If you can remember to take a photo for us and put it in Discord because I love to see the crazy like seafood boil setups. Okay, be safe. Have a wonderful week and hopefully we'll see you on Friday, okay? Have I complained to the property manager? I haven't. I haven't. Let's come over because these onions are almost ready. They're just, the butter is like just starting to get browned around the outside of the pot. So that means that we've cooked a lot of moisture out. And then next up in here is going to be the garlic and the herbs. I'll see you Saturday. Bye, Kay. That might be the next step. I suppose I could do that. I always like try and be a pretty easygoing neighbor in apartments. We're almost there. I'm so thirsty today. Maybe I will message Mabel and just be like, can you go like check on the next door apartment? Cause there's been this weird smell coming from there. <laughs> That's not a weird thing to say, right? Is that like being too needy? I know she has like enough stuff to deal with all the time, but like she lives in the building. So it is super handy. <laughs> Type up a note. That's so funny. That reminds me of a vlogger I was watching. Uh, someone in her apartment building kept stealing her like PR packages that companies would send her because they like they knew her right being on YouTube. So she was threatening that she was like gonna put this one box that they would know and like put some of her cat's poop inside of it for them to take. She's like, is that too mean? <laughs> and I was just dying laughing. Yo, yo shit stinks. That might be the easiest. Okay, I'm putting this in. It's time. It's literally time going in the pot. Okay, I'll, I'll see myself out now. And holy, does it ever smell good when you start to put this stuff in there? Mmm. Just like a moment or two with this stuff so the garlic doesn't burn. And then next we put the rice in and we toast the rice. This is the risotto steps if you guys have always wondered. It's not as scary as everyone else makes it out to be. 
They just want you to be scared of it, so you go to a restaurant and have it. That's honestly my general consensus. <laughs> I do love that guy. What? He's like a ex like NASA guy, isn't he? An engineer from somewhere. I love his videos. The squirrel one. Okay, it's time. Three quarters of a cup. And now it's gonna like really sizzle up. And the rice, you know it's toasted because the kernels will go translucent when we use fat with it. Quick little stir like that. Whoa, did you see that rice was like, went flying out? Hello? Next one, very important. We gotta get some wine into there. Enough to cover the whole bottom of the pot. The whole bottom's got to be covered. And then we're going to start to turn this down to a medium-low heat. And look, our poaching pot is up, so that's good. I'm just going to get all this off of the spoon. All of those tasty goodness. I'm gonna move this handle so I can actually use it. Cause I like to like shake the pot like that to even it back out. So all the wine's almost cooked out. So next one that I'm gonna add is some of our mushroom broth. Enough to coat all of the rice kernels, just like that, not a lot. I'm gonna give that a stir. And then this should come up to a very low simmer. Not a boil, just a simmer. Should be a couple bubbles around the bottom of the pot. We'll stir it in about a minute from now. And then once that liquid is absorbed, we'll add the same amount again. And you just do that until the rice is either cooked, al dente, or you're like out of liquid, right? But from experience, like I never really measure out the liquid for risotto. I just usually try to make enough as I see it needs it. Gotta test the wine to make sure it isn't poison. I suppose I could. I'm not like a big drinker. Like I know even if I have like a couple of sips of the wine, my whole face is gonna go like blush and red. And I'll probably feel weird later. I want to be like good around my family. Even though I'm like the only one at a family function, like if we all go out to dinner, I'm like one of the few that doesn't order a drink at dinner. I felt so funny. It was like me and my grandparents and like my one other uncle <laughs> the only ones without alcohol. I just don't care. And it's so expensive at a restaurant. Like I could get another dish instead of like getting a glass of wine, you know? It's called Rosita. When you get like the rosy cheeks when you drink. You don't drink, give no Fs. Yeah, honestly, I don't. It's so funny that I'm just like, I'm, no, I'm good with water. I'm good. If anything, I'd rather order like a yummy like mocktail. Order some non-beer. Or rosacea. Rosacea? I don't know if it's that specifically, but you've never grown up with alcohol in your mom's family. Yeah, so like, let's say this. I grew up with some family members that have like struggled with it their whole life. Specifically like my favorite grandpa ever, my dad's dad was like such a brilliant human. And yeah, it ended up taking his life unfortunately. So after that, like you kind of realize that it is genetic and I realized some unhealthy things that I was like, the ways that I was living. So I made a change. 
And yeah, not drinking was like such a good positive change on my life. And it's not to say that like I won't ever have a drink again. It's just not something I care about. It's more of like a celebratory thing than like something that has to always be there. It's really sad. It honestly is. Yeah, he was a brilliant mathematician and he was like a closet drinker. That like, honestly, I didn't know until he was gone out of my life. And like, he was someone that like, my grandpa would be cooking in the kitchen and like, I would be the kid like standing in the dishwasher in there with him. So like, we were pretty close. You're glad your mom got out of it. Yes. So yeah, I definitely like worry about some of my family members. That's why it's really good to always like check up on your people, even friends too. It doesn't matter if it's friends or family. Right? And yeah, you learn that you just like, you've moved on. I'm proud of us, honestly, chat. I really am. I think I want to add this little bit of like chopped mushroom into this while we're cooking so it softens and then okay thank you for the really good chats i'm gonna just prepare some salad ingredients while we're waiting on this on the side that sounds good And yeah, don't get me wrong, I totally enjoy like a good cocktail every now and then. I don't mind it, I will say that. Okay. Look at these cute little tomatoes, that might be perfect, honestly. Oh, I was gonna make asparagus. I was gonna make asparagus. What's that all about? I will have a drink of water. Thank you, Buffel. Having a sip right now. I am someone, okay, who like, when I drink, it's like the limit does not exist. It's like I feel invincible, and then all of a sudden the limit really does exist. And I realize I've taken it too far. And like the amount of times I have made myself sick, it's just not even worth it anymore. And that's how I know that I have a problem. <laughs> and that is okay, because I know what not to do. Simo Swanee, hello. How are you? It has been a long time. You're already so weird. Being pointed out for not drinking is not even the top 10, totally. I, I know that like my family probably honestly thinks I'm weird now. That's okay though. <laughs> Just gonna rinse this cucumber. And ooh, do you gotta put more broth in there? Almost. Almost. Exactly, we're all a little weird. Just make some nice little cucumber pieces. I think we'll just build this salad in a bowl on the side. Put it together. Okay, ready guys? Can you see the bubbles that we're getting in here? Do I have to like show you a bit closer? Cause it's kind of important to see like how it is simmering. Does that make sense? I could even turn it probably a little bit lower. Add some more. It smells so yummy in here. One thing I still have to get out of the fridge is some of our grated Gouda, our aged Gouda cheese. <laughs> Define weird. <laughs> that is true, we do need a definition. Maybe we don't wanna know. Okay, get the spinach. -y. What? I have avocado, but I think I want to save the avocado for later when I come home. 
I feel like I'm not gonna need a snack after dinner when I get back. It is supposed to be brown a little in the bottom. No. It's not supposed to be browned on the bottom. Yeah, there's nothing ever stuck on the bottom of the pot when you make risotto. Ah, gross. That was the worst part of foraging your own mushrooms is when you find the worms and all the weird bugs that live alongside of them. I always remember Zach when we lived on the island and he would forage for us. He would never clean the mushrooms because he was terrified of the worms. So then he'd always bring them over for me to clean the mushrooms and then after I clean them, okay, he could eat them no problem. I'm like, you're such a butthead. Whoa, you had some ticks on yours? I lucked out, I've never seen any ticks on my shrooms. Okay, now you just put this on there. I didn't make a massive salad. Cause I have dinner at five. It's so early. We're going to a place called the Cajun House in the suburb that I grew up in. Yeah, ticks in general are just terrible. Okay, so that's it. We just have to dress it later. Wasn't that easy of a salad? Done. Refreshing. Healthy. And then we're gonna cover it with a bacon vinaigrette. Connecticut's the birthplace of Lyme disease? Yuck. That was something I was always so worried about with poshers. Stir this. We're getting there. It's starting to look good. I'm gonna take my one egg out of the fridge so it can kind of temp up for when we have to poach it. Where's my cheese, if you please? Thank you. You did tick checks every time you would come in from playing. Nuts. That's not so. Cheese. Cheesy bits. Ever heard of Plum Island off New York? No. Buffle, where's the feta, Kate? You got me this time. There's no feta in my house, unfortunately. Okay, the entire list is crossed off now. We did it all. Yeah, Plum Island, did you know that they have plums? <laughs> the last thing I'm grabbing is just this parsley. I was making sure it was just parsley and no cilantro because that would destroy the entire dish. Okay, look, bring our little eggy over. It's safe there. Stir this. It's almost time to add more liquid than when the rice kernels start peeking out above it. You always want them to be submerged. Let's also dial in this poaching pot. It's still ripping. It's going. Some messed up stuff comes from that island, Greek. I'm just grabbing some white vinegar to put in the poaching pot. Cause it'll help the egg coagulate. The albumins.
Maybe by the end of the stream, the pineapple delight will be finished. Maybe. Just grabbing a Ziploc for that leftover Arborio rice. We didn't even make a dent in it. <laughs> America is sketchy at best. I love that. that. Canada is like not far behind. Canada is not far behind. Yeah, like the Netflix movie with Jonah, is it Jonah Hill? Don't look up. Call me Canada. Okay, don't bring that much politics into it. <laughs> I'll just laugh. Just keep cooking. Hey, wine can go back. The wine is fine. Done with the sheet pan. I love to clean as I work. So you don't have to take as long later to clean up. Got extra bacon strips in my life. I guess we could have chopped those up, put them on the salad. You guys are like me, the way I think of like the world we live in. That's so funny. We're like so sus about everything. It's like when you know, you know though, right? It's like, you can't fool me. Okay, the bottom's almost dry. Let's add some more. I'm gonna pour off my spoon. And that's all the broth we have left. That is looking good. It's almost time to taste it. I'm just gonna put a little sprinkling of pepper. Who's honking out there? What are they doing? Lil Angel Girl, thanks for the follow. Welcome. Okay, so that's how that is. How are you gonna plate that? Do 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 with the poached egg. Probably in my like rimmed plate that I always use. We have some surface area. I honestly think I'm gonna cut up a couple sprigs of asparagus just to put in the risotto. You can also have a like quick little chat about storing this in your fridge. Yeah, I don't want to talk about Palestine. Just because like we always try and escape from the terrible things that's happening in the world. Actually, I like this other view. Okay, so this is how I keep my asparagus when I buy it. You put it in a container with like an inch of water and it'll help the stalks from drying out. I bought this on Thursday, Thursday. And it's now Sunday and it still looks like perfect. If I didn't do this, I'm pretty sure the stalks would be like dried all together and we wouldn't be able to use it. Let's come back here. I'm just gonna take a couple of the stalks out because asparagus and mushroom is so good. Same with asparagus and risotto. I'm gonna take the ones that look like they froze a bit. I don't know how that happened. I guess there's just some cold areas in my fridge. You know they froze because they go like clear looking. We broke the cells. But yeah, the asparagus looks lovely this week. I kind of broke the bank buying it, but I was like, I had this hankering for a asparagus. Yeah, blanch them, toss them in the freezer. That's the best way to save them at this point. 
I'm gonna go a little higher up because that felt really firm. So we just cut off the bottom part because it's really woody. Where it comes out of the ground. How's our risotto? I'll so just like give it a little shake to see the texture of it. The rice is looking good, Greek. Thank you. If you make a pyramid to go over food, you can keep it for way longer. Like a paper pyramid? What? I've never heard of this. Where did this mushy piece come from? Oh, just on this side here. And that's how fast like asparagus will just break down. It doesn't take much for fresh veggies. So then from here, you notice like most of them are all the same size except this. Like what is this even? That doesn't count. We're just gonna do one inch lengths. Cause it should still be easy to eat with the risotto. And then we'll put those in near the end cause it's not gonna take a long time to get that cooked. And so that way it'll also stay green. I'm gonna have a taste of this and see where we're at. See where this rice is at cooking wise. It looks like it's over halfway. Or like kind of right on that halfway, maybe like 60% cooked mark. So we are getting there. We are getting there quickly. Mmm, the tarragon flavor is so good. That works really good too, Trev. That's like almost how I keep my herbs. Just in like a bag with a, a little piece of paper towel. And they will last like easily twice as long compared to if I don't take that little bit of effort. You seen it on TikTok, the pyramid thing? I've never seen this. So I don't even know what you guys are talking about, but I am intrigued. Only pyramid shapes, probably because it like draws the moisture up into that area rather than it like sitting on the stuff. That's all I could really think of though. Yeah, how does math keep my food fresh? <laughs> I love it. It's not really even that. Yeah, we're too high for math right now. Don't. Okay, I'm taking a really quick bathroom break again, and then we'll finish all this up. B or B. Hello, it's me. Wait, what didn't work? Build a pyramid in your backyard and keep your veggies in it? Do it. Whoa. There's no more liquid in here again. Put the rest of that in there. So that's all of the mushroom broth that we have. I think we'll have to mix up just a very small amount more. 
for like maybe one more time that we pour the broth in. And then we are gonna make this pretty thick when we get to finish it because we do have the mushroom cream to add in there still, which is gonna add some liquid. You need to mummify the veggies, but why? Okay, I'm just gonna mix a little bit of a veggie broth here. Like that much more liquid. Even that I don't need. Do that. And then when we're really close to being almost done is when we poach our egg. And that's the last thing. I'm just using this to go into this water. It's almost like the same color as the mushroom broth. I'm getting hungry too. I'm like so ready for this. And then I think in like a couple moments, we'll pop the asparagus in there. We're so close. You're gonna need a doctor. Hello, is there a doctor here? <laughs> we need to talk to you. Hi, we need a doctor. Thank you. We're almost there. I'm getting really excited. Some people also say they're like, if you don't stir your risotto enough though, you're not gonna get like enough of the starches out of it. I will tell you, I don't think it honestly matters how many times you stir it. You just need the right variety of rice to make it properly. That's what matters most. He's a spine doctor, so he should know about the pyramid thing. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if the doctor knows. You, uh, you never know, right? You never know if you don't ask. That's something I've always said. I'm getting so excited for this. Oh, you're <laughs> being sarcastic. The stream just ends and you never see me again. Well, that was embarrassing. <laughs> and that was the last you ever seen of Kate. Oh my gosh. Thanks a lot. Oh, also friends, I wanted to say thanks for the 100 subscribers. We're at 100 subscribers again. I was like, what? When I checked this morning. So thank you, everyone. It made me feel really special. Okay, I'm trying the rice again. I think we're gonna add the asparagus. Mm-hmm. It's getting close to being al dente. Mm. Hey. Greek 101. You just had to, hey? Thank you for gifting this sub to Mad King Matt. Look how long he's been with us too. 63 months in a row. I'm just gonna go boop. We're going to also add a little more of this. I think we're also going to add the mushroom cream in a moment. So I wanted to cook like a little bit in there. Those mushrooms didn't really have any heat on them. 
You just wanted to hear the chicken wing song. Well, thank you very much. Some people hate that song, but I think I know most of us here love it. So we're gonna add a couple spoonfuls of our wild mushrooms that we literally just blended with some whipping cream. And whipping cream is a really good stable dairy. So you don't have to worry about it like curdling in here. But we did learn at the beginning of stream that a proper risotto will never actually have whipping cream in it. We put our own little variation on it today though because I wanted to show you guys something different. So let that cook for a few more moments. Al dente is a name for a tough guy. <laughs> I used to have a friend named Dante. A ladybug came to say hi to you. Why is this pot like going nuts all of a sudden? I love ladybugs. I had so many cute, cute birdies on my walk this morning. It made me so happy. And people probably think I'm like insane when they see me in the neighborhood. Cause I'll like stop and like talk to the birds up in the tree. A mobster is a monster or are they not? There's some mobsters that aren't monsters. That's hard to say. Monster, mobster, same, same, but different. <laughs> I can't wait to eat this. I'm there, my stomach is growling. We almost waited too long. Yeah, we got the good mobsters, this is true. <laughs> I like it. And I usually stir the risotto more frequently when it is getting close to being done because it will stick or try to stick to the bottom a lot more. Get around the edges too. No sticking allowed. Wow, this looks so good. There's also good monsters too. What's a good monster? Think of one. Sully? Was Sully a good monster? I was thinking of Monsters Inc. Or was he still a bad monster? Let's see how this is dialing in the flavor. I'm gonna add some salt. And a bit more pepper too. You have to think there was like no salt in our mushroom broth that we added, right? So we'll definitely need some extra seasoning. This is almost at like the perfect consistency. If you make your risotto too thick, it'll really harden up when you go to plate it. Almost like polenta or grits, right? That we've been making recently on stream. So let us see. If the rice is cooked, I'm gonna turn this off. Mmm. I honestly think it's perfect. Wait, why are we breaking it? <laughs> Do I actually have to remove it? Hey, wait. Ah. Okay, give me a sec. I gotta go on to Twitch to do it. Can't do it on OBS. Clear it. I'm trying. Huh. 
How do I clear it? This is this is a a six years of streaming. Did it work? It worked. Why are you embarrassed? I didn't click on it. What was it? <laughs> okay, I'm turning this off. Look, it's starting to try and stick on the bottom. So just turn this off. We'll leave it here for a moment. I might pour in just a little bit more of this while it's chilling. And then let's come over here. That's our poaching pot for our egg. We put just a little bit of white vinegar in there. And then all we have to do is give the water a swirl with our spoon. Turn this up a bit now that the lid is off. You want like a few bubbles in the water, but nothing crazy. Look, as soon as I took the lid off, it stopped boiling. What is this about? You are doing so perfect. Just because I turned the other burner off, this one cooled off too. Excuse? <laughs> it was a big whale. Shutterbug, thank you. Katniss got slapped. Okay, there we go. Okay, now we'll get our swirl. Pack your egg down this side of the pot. Just like that. Give the water one more swirl. And that's it. See how like nothing stuck? And it all just like stayed one little package? That's exactly what you want. So I'll take a couple moments to cook for sure. So while we're finishing, we can kind of go to the other pot. Like that. Give this one more swirl. And then we're gonna add our cheese into there. A little bit of lemon squeezed. Ever poach quail eggs? I don't think I've ever poached a quail egg. I've done like some other things with them. So that is aged Gouda, which is really similar to like what a Parmesan cheese would be. You want a nice aged cheese for your risotto. I added vinegar while we had a moment earlier, Kat. You might have missed it. And then we're not going to use this whole lemon because it's massive. So I'll just cut another small piece off of it to juice into the risotto. Ah, and there's a little seed there. We always add the cheese and lemon at the end. Number one, so that the cheese doesn't cook and stick to the bottom of the pot because that will happen. We add the lemon at the end so that it doesn't become too strong of an acidic flavor. If we cook it and like add it at the beginning, let's say, right? I'm gonna try and poach this egg medium. It's a little bit yolky. See how this sits? You literally have to always have a bit of extra broth handy. Okay, how's this? Almost done, I think. Where's my slotted spoon? I did apply for the job. I'm waiting to hear back. There's also a job that I'm going to apply to tomorrow at my culinary school. They're looking for someone for like a procurement position. And I was like, I feel like I could do that. Poke in the yolk. 
still a little bit more we can go. Okay, I'm gonna taste, I'm just gonna get the egg off of there. I'm gonna taste this risotto, see how I feel. Just like a touch more salt. Just a little bit more. The flavors are really good though. It doesn't even taste like mushroom. I'll honestly say that. It's like kind of sweet and cheesy. Really, really good. I'm gonna flip this over for a sec. I'm gonna bring the risotto the board. Probably need a ladle for that or something. Gotta remember that the egg will keep cooking, right? When you take it out of the water. I'm gonna stop there. It feels really nice. Just slotted spoon onto a plate so you drain some of the water. You can put a cloth under if you want. I'm not going to waste one today, though. Would I choose that over going back to Nunavut? I want to go back up to Nunavut. I just don't want to go back to the kitchen. Because there's just so many issues. And it's like just straight up honestly become a toxic environment. That I don't need to be a part of anymore. So I would love to go back up to Nunavut. And get hired on like either their operating team, like equipment operator, or even just like site services as a skilled labor. Thanks, Nightwander. Okay, ladle that out. It's already like super thickened. And like you can see it's saucy in the pot. Some of those asparagus nubs. She be thick. Like how many times did we add extra stuff to that? We're gonna cut the yolk together, don't worry. Just a little bit of parsley to finish around the edge. You can go a little bit on the plate, but we usually try and keep our garnishes like on the food. Maybe just a swirl of olive oil around the side because it looks like a bit plain. Let's see if I can get the last of this finishing one out. Okay, grabbing my phono. My phono for the photo. Do we need to get the salad out at the same time? I think first I'll get the photo of this. I don't really care that much about the salad being in there. Keep trucking. Hello. How's the food truck going? Still like not much progress on it. But we still have it. So there's that I suppose. Let me get this like. Opened up for you guys. That is what I was planning. For the dish. Because the egg yolk is going to make like a sauce. Cookie. You did come back right on time. We might have snuck some asparagus into there too. But yeah, we always kind of use the yolk, especially for brunch. 
It was like a sp sauce part of the dish. The food truck is never going to have a set menu. It's going to be like a private event sort of thing, if that makes more sense to you guys. Okay, I already had a fork. I want to try this. Yeah, so the menu will be seasonal. It'll be depending on like what we booked, whether it's like a wedding, a summer festival, something like that. And I also want to do like a couple pop-ups at a farm or something. Obviously during the summer, that would be the smartest. And yeah, we still have to do the dessert and the salad. But we added the egg to this dish to make it complete with our protein source. Like, look at that. Cheers, chat. Mm. The asparagus makes it like taste so fresh, honestly. I really like that we added that. It would be kind of bland without it. It adds a nice texture too. Like the mushrooms are nicely cooked. You don't really notice that they're in there. Have I ever invented a new dish? I was like really creative when I was a pastry chef and I was forced into this role. I'm glad I accepted it though, because I learned a lot of stuff when I did that. The brightness of like the lemon you get every now and then. Those fresh herbs honestly like made this. And like a little bit of saltiness from the aged cheese. But yeah, I was lucky when I was a pastry chef, I was given free reign over the menu so I could make whatever I want. I made some pretty cool things. Yay! Cookie, thank you very much. Nice, evening it up. 30% of the way through that goal now. Thank you. I can't wait to show Samo when he's home. We've been crushing it. And the other part of like adding the egg on this dish is like the brightness of the yolk just makes everything else pop. Because other than that, like if we didn't have the asparagus or the egg, it would, everything would be pretty brown. Mm -hmm. Made a good risotto because it's still like not drying out. It'll always be like a little bit dry around the edge. You should be able to like dig into it though and it's still like saucy looking. I guess they attempted to make risotto at camp the other day and it was like a rock hard puck, Sam said. <laughs> so bad. Hey, wait, we worked hard on this one today. Our bacon vinaigrette. Pasteurized eggs. I don't think like the general public were allowed to even like source those. Or you're saying like the cardened ones. Yeah, like the general public, where are we gonna find that? Cause we can get it no problem, like ordered from a place like GFS or Cisco. It's like, you'll get the egg, you can get a whole egg in the carton. You can also just get egg whites in the carton. Pour the dressing full of tasty bacon bits and herbs and garlic and honey. You want the whole egg? Cause like I remember being able to buy a carton of egg whites. I think they were pasteurized. 
I honestly can't remember. But this this salad should be really delicious on the side with the risotto. Like, we got bacon in there. So we got bacon and eggs. It's basically breakfast, if we put it that way. And just something to cut through the richness because risotto is quite rich on its own, especially when we add the egg yolk. But breakfast should always be a really nice hearty meal. I'm going for a big old bite. Mm. It's seriously such a good combo. The vinegar got me. But it's perfect. Get some tomatoes on there. I'm pretty sure the like whole eggs that you buy at the supermarket in the shell, they're not pasteurized. Mm. Okay, now. You could see we cut into this earlier. I know it's still wasn't firm enough yet. That was after an hour and 20 in the freezer. I think we're gonna make it today. Oh no, get back in there. What do you think you're doing? Seal it back up. I'm just going around the edge so that we can get this out. Okay. How about you can just like smash it back together? That's easy. Cut through the graham crust too. There's a good layer of it on the bottom with butter too. It's still like not completely frozen in the center. That's insane. Okay, I want to make this like centerpiece pretty nice. You know how bad I wanted to eat this last night? I had such a hankering. Okay, now the hardest part, honestly. We will find a spatula. I cut it sideways, don't judge me. Did I just come off of the crest? <laughs> Why is the first piece always the most difficult to get out? Okay, I can't tell if the crust held together or not. Yes, I licked my fingers. Just grabbing a small plate. Just turn it over, turn it on its head. I feel like the crust is like really crumbly. I could be wrong though. She was wrong. Okay, that was like me serving it weird. <laughs> I can probably get a better uh, serving piece now. That is how it came out, so not bad. We're just gonna turn it this way. Just like you guys said, then you can see the crust. Who's gonna know? No one's gonna know. No one's even gonna know. 
I'm more excited to eat this than lunch. It's seriously my fave. And then we're just gonna like cover it in coconut. And I'll put some around the plate too because I like a couple bites with coconut. I don't know if I've ever had it with this either. I don't think my mom ever put coconut on it. Put a sprig of mint on if it existed in my house. You can see like it's already melting. Okay. It's totally like Dole Whip. Maybe that's why I'm obsessed with it. Cause that was like something I really loved when I was young. I'm going for a bite. I'm just gonna flip it so I can have crust too now. We're done with the photo. Ooh, look, the top layer is like frozen and the middle is so nice and soft still. The crust is a little bit hard. I've never used those graham crackers before. They're gluten free. Okay, open up. Cheese. Mm. It turned out. And it's not even sweet. Me too, Trev. Were you the kid that like ate Cool Whip straight from the freezer? Because I may have done that every now and then. But yeah, you can make this with Cool Whip. We didn't. Which is honestly why I think we had to kind of freeze it and get more stability. Just by using real whipped cream instead. It's good. It is good. So I'm probably just gonna keep that in the freezer as an ice box cake. And that way I'll just take a piece out when I'm ready to eat it. The fresh pineapple has this like nice sourness at the back of like your palate too when you're eating it. So it's not just like cream to your face. I will pre-cut it before putting it back. Let's just do it now. I'll use my paring knife. Cause then it will be so easy to serve, right? It's good to cut it now with how the texture is of everything. Cause Sam comes home on Thursday. This week coming up and then I think our roommate is the following Tuesday home. He's on an off rotation now. He's on a four and two rotation and Sam's on a three and three. Yeah, look at how soft that's getting in the middle still. Ooh, yeah, strawberry syrup, like anything that goes good with pineapple, right? Which is like a lot of stuff if we think about it. For sure. Like this is just a base recipe. You can always put your own spin on it. And yeah, the nice thing about this not being like super sweet to start with is you could totally put a nice sweet fruit sauce with it. You would eat this in one serving. It's such a simple, fun dessert. If you guys have kiddos, make it with your kiddo because I loved, I loved this when I was young and my mom would make it. It's like deceivingly rich, I would say, for sure. Now there's butter in the crust, there's butter in the filling even. Like what the heck? Mm. The graham crumbs aren't bad though, for being gluten free. 
Or like they don't have a weird texture. They're made with tapioca flour. I thought it'd be weird. And like the flavor is on point too. We did it. We made it through an entire weekend of streams, guys. It was fun. It was a busy weekend. I'm definitely ready to be done now. And then this week coming up, I'm gonna like try vlogging. I'm gonna try and actually make a YouTube vlog just with my phone to start. I attempted to do it with the GoPro last week and I just had too many issues. I said heck it, honestly. Mish, did you watch the one uh, YouTube vlog I sent you yet? Of the girl that's in Copenhagen? I've been like binge watching that ch channel. It's so nice. Whoa. Cat's making a cake. I think we have to go visit her because it looks really good. Cat's making a cake. Okay, friends, thanks for the fun, quick and easy Sunday stream. Keeping it nice and short because I have somewhere to go later today and I'm sure you guys probably do too. Let me get this raid set up. Thanks for hanging out all weekend with us if you did. Appreciate the time you take out of your life to spend it with me. Cat of Whimsy. I will definitely enjoy my family dinner. I'll try and remember to take a photo of what I eat because it's like Cajun food. Last time I went, I got the beans with like smoked sausage and it was only 15 bucks. It was so good though. I It literally doesn't bother me at all. So like the only person that's making you feel bad, Katniss, is yourself. I'm not upset. I didn't click it. I honestly don't care. So don't feel bad, okay? It's us just chilling anyways together. You're all good. But yeah, I'll be back on, I think, Friday. I'll definitely be able to stream like Sam will be back, but he's the one that has to relax, not me because I've been home the whole time. So I'll see you guys on Friday, Saturday and Sunday coming up. It should be a fun one. We'll probably build some Christmas Legos, but just pop in Discord. You'll see I'll post the schedule probably on Wednesday is when I like to do it. Okay, let's go see Kat's cake. It's actually looking insanely massive. So let's go spread the deliciousness there. I love y'all. Be safe out there. If you need me at all, you know where to find me on my socials. I'm always here. If you need like any food related advice. Okay, I'm gonna hit that button. See you this next week. Take care. And that's all I got. Bye.